just why does the everlasting gospel include the hour of judgment? This is the first angel of Revelation 14, part 107 of the Revelation study. We've been working through the book of Revelation. We're currently in Revelation 14, which are portraits of the last day, whether judgment or salvation. We're starting the three angels of judgment. We're going to have to understand this symbolically. Revelation is highly symbolic. We compare scripture with scripture. Scripture is spiritual. Jesus' words are spirit. Jesus is the word of God. So we compare spirit with spirit. Precept upon precept, a little bit here, a little bit there. And we just understand how precious are God's thoughts. They're so precious. How great is the sum, the totality of God's thoughts are so precious to us. Please consider subscribing. There's a little red button in the right-hand corner. And let's move on now in this study. Okay, so there's three angels in Revelation 14 that bring judgment. The three angels of judgment. The first angel, which we're going to look at in this video, is the everlasting gospel and the hour of judgment. And immediately, we're con we, we, we ponder and we wonder, how would the gospel, the good news of salvation, include the hour of judgment? We have to resolve that. The second angel is about the fall of Babylon. And the third angel is about the wrath of God and those who worship the beast in his image. So we're going to look at these in three videos. This one is the everlasting gospel and the hour of judgment. Okay, and here are the key verses. I saw another angel, because there's a lot of angels in the book of Revelation. And now in Revelation 14, we're going to look at three in particular. And this angel flies in the middle or midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. And this everlasting gospel is preached to every nation, every kindred, which means tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. How can the everlasting gospel include judgment? Isn't the everlasting gospel just about salvation? And worship him that made heaven, earth, sea, and the fountains of water. So let's dig in and understand what this means. First, the everlasting gospel. The word everlasting, anoeus, which literally means eternal. Jesus Christ, we know, is the same yesterday, today, forever. He's the eternal God. Second Samuel 23, God's made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and sure. For this is all my salvation and all my desire. That's what, that's what life is all about, is eternal life, is the gospel. It's salvation to be with God forever and enjoy him forever. Psalm 89, I've made a covenant with my chosen, God's chosen people. I have sworn unto David my servant, thy seed will I establish forever and will build thy throne to all generations. It's a wonderful, beautiful picture of everlasting salvation with God. And we see that this beautiful salvation goes to nations, tribes, tongues, and people. And several places in the book of Revelation, we we find the same address to the nations, tribes, tongues, and people. And we're not going to go through this in detail, but the nations literally mean a culture. The tribe has to do with blood relationships, which would mean race. So it's cultures, races. Tongues refer, of course, to language. And peoples, it's a group of people from various backgrounds, but they all have a common cause. Maybe they're all Christian, maybe they're all of a particular country, more, more, maybe they have a political reason or some other reason, or maybe they're just rallying around some cause. So there's four things that shows that the, the beautiful nature of God that he discriminates not. He, the, his gospel goes out through all the world to all types of people. It's important to understand that the everlasting gospel includes blood. Blood had to be shed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, he shed his blood. Hebrews 10, we are sanctified or set apart through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all, all his people, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever. Jesus Christ, the one sacrifice forever. All other sacrifices were just rituals that pointed to the true sacrifice, which was Jesus Christ. Hebrews 9, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was offered to bear the sins of many, not all, many, his people. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation, a future event. 
unto salvation. There's a future salvation. So let's keep moving on and unpack this everlasting gospel. Okay, so the big question is that the everlasting gospel and the hour of judgment, it appears on the surface like it's a contradiction. Like it's good news of salvation, but it's the hour of judgment, which is, which is the, uh, the penalty. It's, it's the judgment for sin. And the, the, unfortunately, the false teaching of premillennialists confused the timing of judgment and salvation. And in this passage in Revelation, we see it clearly at the same time. It's the same thing. It, but it, premillennialists, they falsely teach that the resurrection of Christians, they call it also the rapture, is 1,000 years, the millennium, prior to the judgment day of the wicked. So they separated by a thousand years, and that's not true. And I'll tag this slide with the video we've done on that. So let's move on and understand the right meaning of the everlasting gospel. It's important to see in the Bible that the gospel includes judgment day. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Paul said that the gospel includes the judging of the secrets of men. 2 Corinthians 5.10, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to what he has done, whether it be good or bad. There's a, there's a universal judgment day. There's a, a day of resurrection. And we see that very clearly in John 5. The hour is coming in which, uh, which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they, they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. There's a general resurrection of the dead. I'll tag this slide with that general resurrection. But it's important to see that there's a general resurrection of the dead. In this passage, we see that it's time to fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. And the hour doesn't mean an actual 60 minutes, because minutes aren't, don't appear in the Bible. There were no 60 minutes at that time. It has to do with that time. It's, it's happening together. It's happening quickly. Revelation 18.10 referring to the judgment on Babylon on that last day. Uh, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Revelation 3.10 Because you have kept my word of patience, I will keep thee from the hour of trial or temptation, which will come upon all the world to try them that dwell on the earth. It's an hour of judgment, an hour of trial. It's an hour of of the completion on the last day. The hour of judgment also comes as a thief in the night. Revelation 3.3, 3, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and how hold fast and repent. It's a warning. If therefore you shall not watch, Christ comes as a thief, and you shall not know what hour he comes. Luke 12, Therefore be ready, be ready, for the Son of Man comes at an hour when you think not. Everything's going to appear normal, and then judgment day is on top of us. Okay, let's turn now. It's important to understand, and this is, trips people up sometimes, that salvation is in two stages. The salvation that we have now, which in Revelation 20 is called the first resurrection, it's in the Spirit. The Spirit is our connection with God. The soul is our connection with the earth. We recall in Genesis 2 that, that, God, uh, that God breathed into Adam or put his spirit into Adam and he became a living soul because he was in connection to this creation. So it, we're saved now. We're born again in the spirit. Uh, so that's our salvation now. And we await, and we're going to look at verses on the next couple of slides that go into this, but we await the second coming of Christ, the last day, of judgment and salvation for the salvation of our soul. The soul is the connection with the earth, but in that last day, our soul will now be reconnected to the new heavens and the new earth, living in New Jerusalem. So it's, it's, and we have a body that's raised a glorious spiritual body. So the spirit, soul, and, and body will be all reconnected and to live in eternity in a glorious state with Christ. Let's look at a couple verses on the salvation we have now. Ephesians 2, even when we were dead in sins because we were spiritually dead, we've been quickened together with Christ. By grace you are saved. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that's not of yourselves. That faith is a gift of God given to us. 
So we see clearly in that passage that we're already saved in the spirit because we were spiritually dead. Our connection to God was broken. Our soul wasn't dead, but our soul still has a connection to the earth. But salvation is also a future event. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath on that last day through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. That's the salvation of our soul. Or, or we await that beautiful day and we look forward to the salvation of our souls. Salvation forever. In, it, it's in soul and spirit, soul and body. We are not of them who draw back into perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul, future, at that last day. Our spirits are saved now. Our souls will be saved on that last day. And it's important for men once to die, but after this judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto him, them that look for him, he shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. On that last day is our full salvation. We're saved in the spirit, but on that day we'll be saved fully in spirit, soul, and body. Also, it's important to understand that many places in the Bible, Judgment Day is looked at as a positive thing because it's, it's bringing forth God's justice. We live in a world that's chaotic. It's sinful. It's full of lies and deceit and all type of horrendous things that happen. It's a good news when justice will finally be carried out. There's a desire, a call for righteousness by God's people. Psalm 58, the righteous shall rejoice. The righteous will re re rejoice when he sees vengeance. It's not that we want to see people hurt, or but, but, but we have to have justice. We have to have the right thing done. We have to have a holy situation. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. And that's what happens on Judgment Day. So that a man shall say, Verily there is a reward for the righteous. Because right now in this world, some of it doesn't look like there's a reward. Because the righteous offer suffer in a, in a bad way. But we, we trust that God is the one that judges the earth. And there's a, a beauty that's in, in the vengeance that carries out the justice of God. Isaiah 30, therefore will the Lord wait. wait. God is patient that he may be gracious unto you salvation by grace and therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you for the lord is a god of judgment he's merciful on us but he's not merciful merciful on everybody because he's going to be a god of judgment on the last day blessed are all they that wait for him and our hope is in that last day that we won't only be saved in spirit but we'll be saved in the spirit soul and body in a new heavens and a new earth forever and finally, we see what are called imprecatory psalms. In other words, they're a call for justice. There's many psalms in the Bible that call for justice. Help me, O Jehovah my God. Save me according to your mercy. God is a God of mercy. And they will know that this is your hand, that you, Jehovah, have done it. They will curse, but you will bless. They arise and are ashamed but let your servant rejoice. We rejoice on that day of salvation. Let my foes be clothed with shame and let them cover themselves with their own shame as with a cloak. The coming of Christ, the last day, is both a day of salvation and it's a day of judgment. And if there's a call by the righteous for judgment, not that we want to see people suffer, but there has to be justice in the world. I've listed at the bottom of the slide Many psalms that are what are called imprecatory psalms, which is a call for justice, and, but it's a call for salvation and justice that, that, that shows that God does not allow sin to prevail. Even though in this world we live in, it's very sinful and we could be frustrated at all the sin and the deception and the lying and the horrible things that happen, but there is a day of justice as well. Okay, so just a quick summary. The importance of this first angel has to do with, he. this first angel announces the everlasting gospel, but it includes the hour of judgment. And although it might sound odd to us, it's not. The everlasting gospel includes our eternal salvation. Not only are we just saved in the spirit, but we're saved body, soul, and spirit in eternity forever. But the hour of judgment also 
indicates the fact that that there's a righteousness that's brought into this world. It's an internal salvation, not in a sinful world any longer, but it's in a new heavens, a new earth, a new Jer Jerusalem, where everything is made right, everything is righteous and holy. So we're going to move on to the second angel. And the second angel announces that Babylon is fallen because of her fornication. And we're going to look in detail Revelation 17 and 18, but this is the first time in our studies that we've seen Babylon right here in Revelation 14. So we're going to look at it, and it's very enlightening. It's very important to understand why Babylon falls. Please consider subscribing uh, to this channel, and thank you very much for watching this video.